Hi, I'm Michael Allison, Chief of Critical Care Medicine at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. I just got done recording a med mastery course on the Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, a formal CME accredited course chock full of tips, tricks, and information you need to know to take care of ARDS patients. But here, I wanna give you some more casual, quick tips that you'll really need to know the next time you're treating a patient with ARDS in your ICU. Let's start with tip number one, low tidal volume ventilation for all of your patients. It seems like a no brainer. Low tidal volume ventilation was studied in the late 90s, published in the year 2000 via the ARMA trial, and it's become the standard of care in ICUs across the world. So why am I bringing it up as tip number one? Well, there are still some patients who might not get optimal tidal volume delivered to them in the intensive care unit. And who are these patients? Usually it's patients who are shorter and usually women. So the next time you have a woman that has ARDS that you're putting on mechanical ventilation, make sure to calculate that predicted body weight. Set the ventilator at somewhere around six or seven milliliters per kilogram of that predicted body weight and adjust based upon the plateau pressures. We know that there's no safe plateau pressure and the lower the better. So make sure these patients are getting the appropriate tidal volume and not just set at 400, 450, or 500 milliliters. All right, how about tip number two? Use steroids in ARDS. Traditionally, steroids were somewhat of a controversial topic in ARDS. There was some literature supporting their use, but some larger studies, especially through the ARDS network, looked at the late use of steroids and found no benefit and even a little bit of harm when used in patients who had had the disease for greater than 14 days. So where are we today with steroids? I think the controversy has been resolved. In 2020, a couple of articles came out that found benefit to providing steroids to patients in ARDS. The first, called the DEXA ARDS trial, looked at a regimen of 20 milligrams of dexamethasone for five days, followed by 10 milligrams of dexamethasone for the next five days. So that's a total of 10 days of therapy. Patients who got dexamethasone did much better than patients who did not get dexamethasone or who received no steroids in this trial. And this was amongst ARDS patients from a variety of causes. It happened and was published right before the pandemic. Fast forward a couple of months and we've gotten the recovery trial. The recovery trial was done to look at potential therapies for COVID-19 ARDS. And amongst patients with COVID-19 ARDS who were mechanically ventilated, they found a regimen of 10 days of dexamethasone at a dose of six milligrams improved outcomes. So now we've got studies in general ARDS and COVID-19 ARDS supporting the use of steroids, especially when used early in these populations. So in the future, I'm using dexamethasone for my patients with ARDS. In the COVID-19 patients, I'm starting with a dose of six milligrams a day because that's what was studied and that's what was proven effective. In patients with non-COVID ARDS, I will prefer a regimen of 20 milligrams a day followed by 10 milligrams a day, 20 for the first five days, and 10 milligrams for the latter five days. All right, now we're in the home stretch with tip number three, use prone positioning in ARDS. Now, a lot of us have become accustomed to using prone positioning. We know it improves outcomes, and oftentimes we can see drastic improvements in oxygenation. So when you place a patient prone, you get the next ABG and the oxygen doesn't improve, there's this, this impulse and this desire to stop proning, to say that proning doesn't work. But what you might not know is that the PERCEVA trial, that's the trial that looked at prone positioning and found a great benefit to prone positioning in ARDS. When they reanalyzed the data, they found that the change in oxygenation did not predict the benefit that patients saw. Said differently, if you prone a patient and their oxygenation does not improve, that patient still might see benefit from the prone position. So don't stop. You might be wondering, how are patients benefiting from prone positioning if their oxygenation doesn't improve? Well, for one, plateau pressures might be better. You might get a more homogeneous distribution of pressures throughout the lung. And some of this is because we're recruiting 
collapsed alveoli. So even if the oxygenation doesn't improve, I don't want you to forget, try proning your patients, keep going with your protocols, and trust that you're doing the right thing to help these patients improve. Well, there you have it. Three tips that you need to know for ARDS. Are you hungry for more? Check out the full Med Mastery course for more information on tidal volume ventilation, steroids, prone positioning, and so much more. It's a comprehensive look at ARDS. You don't want to miss it.